Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are having a quick glance at the True Free F1 air conduction headphones. And what air conduction actually means? Well, this is what I'm going to start with right after the intro. So if you are not familiar with the term air conduction headphones, it basically means that we get a traditional dynamic driver which projects sound into your ears without covering or blocking your ear canals. So in the case of the True Free F1, we got a 16.2mm driver in each speaker unit which sit in front of your ears and the sound is delivered through these holes protected by a metal mesh which are pointing towards the ear. So this is an open-ear design, but manufacturers prefer to call it air conduction. It's not to be confused with bone conduction, which is also an open-ear design, but the way music is delivered there is completely different. However, to make things even more confusing, the general design of the F1 strongly resembles that of most bone conduction headphones, such as the Shox Open Run Pro, the Padmate S30 or the Halo Per Free BC01. We get a flexible headband which wraps around the back of your neck, two battery or main units behind the ears, and two speaker units in front. The True Free F1 is comfortable to use for running or walking around, and the fit is also secure and snug enough for such activities. I only start to feel some pressure on my tragus after a while, as the speakers sit on top of that piece of cartilage in front of my ears, which can cause some discomfort after two, two and a half hours of use. That's with one hour of running included, with loads of bouncing and also this is just my experience, so your mileage might vary. So the comfort and the fit make the F1 usable for all sorts of physical activities and thanks to the open-ear design, your situational awareness remains intact, which can be a huge deal when running or cycling outside. It's been way too cold for me to hop on a bike for actual tests on the road, but as you can see the headphones can be used along with bike helmets and sunglasses with one caveat. The strap on my helmet blocks the control buttons, so I have to wear the headphones over the strap to avoid this problem. But depending on the design of your helmet, you might not even have to deal with such issue of course. Moving on with the design, the IPX4 rating of the F1 means that we get just a basic protection against sweat and rain, which is supposed to be safe enough for casual outdoor use. Sure, you should not submerge the true free headphones into water, but if you get caught in a shower when running, you will be just fine. The headband is not made from titanium as on most more expensive open-ear headphones, so it's not quite as sturdy and as you will see later on it can cause some issues when using the controls. But the True Free F1 delivers a reassuringly good build quality overall, especially for its $40 price tag. And for that money we also get a soft but thick carry pouch, which is always a nice touch regardless of price. And what I really like is not only the fact that we got a long battery life of 11 hours and 5 minutes according to my own tests, but also that the headphones come with a standard USB Type-C charging port. Most bone conduction or open-ear headphones come with their own version of some sort of a magnetic charger, which has its own advantages of course, but when it comes to traveling or carrying around charging cables, the less you have to deal with the better. So I'm always happy to see a USB Type-C port, especially when it's hidden behind a plastic cover, which offers at least some protection against dust and moisture buildup in the long run. In terms of connection, there is a Bluetooth 5.3 chip on board, with support for the SBC and the AAC audio codecs. We get no high-res codec, but what we get is multipoint support, so you can connect the F1 to two devices at the same time. Switching can be automatic and it all works seamlessly across all platforms. Pairing in general is quick and easy, both with Android and iOS devices and I had no connection issues whatsoever and I experienced no problems with lip sync when watching videos either. And even though I've seen worse performances in the past when it comes to gaming, I noticed a slightly lower latency on iOS compared to Android. True, my Xperia 5 Mark II is an older model than my iPhone 13 Pro Max, 
so your mileage might vary depending on what phone you use, but in general, I would say that the F1 headphones can easily handle some casual gaming. And if you were wondering what the microphones on the True Free F1 might sound like, here is a quick audio sample for you. So this is what you can expect from these headphones when making a phone call inside in a quiet environment. So far so good, but let's see what happens if you step outside and try to make a phone call with some traffic noise around. So this is what you get from the built-in microphones on the True Free F1 in these rather challenging conditions. Moving on to controls, I've got some good news, but also some bad news. The good news is that you can find the three button array on the right main unit, and that allows you to control all sorts of functions, such as play, pause, tracks, volume and phone calls. And the power button on the front can also be used to activate either pairing mode or your voice assistant. So we get all the functions we will ever need at our fingertips, and the physical buttons, while being very plasticky and cheap, work quite well for the most part. They have a tactile feedback and quick enough reaction times, so that's again the good news. However, the bad news is that cramming all these buttons on the head unit behind your right ear makes the volume down button a bit cumbersome to use. Let me explain. The speaker units, where you can find some of the controls on similarly designed headphones, sit steadily and flat on the bones in front of your ears, and so do the front of the main units right behind the ears. So pushing those buttons won't cause problems, but the further we go back behind the ear, there is a gap opening up between that unit and my head. So every time I press on the volume down button, which is located the furthest away from my ears, I push the whole thing in and that makes the speaker lift off in the front. I have to use my thumb as support behind the main unit to stop it from moving, so essentially I have to pinch the button with two fingers. And it takes some time to get used to. The volume up button is basically the same, only marginally better, and while the on off button works properly without having to perform any tricks, I keep using two fingers with all the buttons regardless, just to make sure the headphones won't move when I use the controls. I believe if the headband was just a bit more stiff or sturdy, it wouldn't allow for such movement. But again, I guess that using titanium is out of question in this price range, so the manufacturer had to settle for some cheap material, which bends more easily. And maybe it's just the shape or the size of my head, which is the problem here, but I never ran into such issue with other similarly designed open-ear headphones. And while we are discussing the controls, I also have to mention that there is no smartphone app available for the True Free F1, so you don't get to play around with features and settings. And while these limitations did not necessarily strike me as a surprise considering the low price point of the product, what I did not expect at all was the great overall sound quality of the F1. Of course, we cannot talk about audiophile sound here, but the true free headphones can simply destroy bone conduction headphones in this price range, such as the Padmate S30, and can easily compete with other open air designs at even higher price points, such as the Mu6 Ring. And what impresses me more than anything is the bass response of the F1. By open ear standards, it's powerful and punchy, without the annoying resonances and tickling vibrations you can get from most bone conduction headphones. And that superior bass makes the whole sound more balanced. Sure, when I say superior bass, I'm not talking about such a low end impact you can get from in ear buds or traditional over ear headphones, but in its own category, this sort of a bass performance is exceptional. Midrange could be a touch more open and forward, but it's more than lively and rich enough considering its open air design and especially its price. We don't get an extremely good extension in the treble, but the necessary musical details are there and the sound never gets too bright or overly harsh. We get a roomy sound stage with decent separation between the musicians and their instruments on that stage. The imaging is not quite as center focused as everything is a bit spread across between your two ears, which I find preferable to most, 
in the middle of your head sounding competitors. You only get a similar amount of sound leakage as let's say from the Padmate S30, which in my book is acceptable even when you use your headphones in a quiet place with other people around such as an office. Volume is loud enough for casual listening and even in a noisy environment it is proved to be plenty loud for me. That said, probably no open air headset will ever be loud enough for volume junkies anyway. And the same applies to bass and bass heads, but I believe that everyone else will find the sound of the true free F1 more than pleasing enough. And to wrap things up, I can say the same about the whole experience with these open ear headphones. The low price tag might become quite obvious here and there, and the control buttons could have been better placed across the body of the headphones. But if someone had told me just like two years ago that I will be able to buy a balanced sounding open ear headset with full controls and the 10 plus hours of battery life for around 40 bucks, I would have just laughed at them to be honest. But the true free F1 can do all that and it indeed costs $40, so if you want a cheap alternative for safe and enjoyable music listening during your outdoor workouts, then these headphones must make it to your shopping list. And this is where my review of the true free F1 ends. Please like and subscribe if you feel like I or my content deserve it and let's continue the discussion in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.